that uh, we're gonna kick this over to um, we're gonna kick this over to the uh, uh, brother Panic, but also, like I said, all you brothers can feel free to jump in. But on the other hand, death is the new frontier. In 1999, I did a whole year on death in a lot of the tapes. Death is the new frontier. It is the light in the other room that will come on after this light is extinguished. The only difference was is that particular realm hadn't matured to the maximum of what it's going to be. But believe it or not, I know at least from 2001 up to now, the other realm, the underworld, the Amenta, these different mystical names, they have had a series of initiations or a series of what they call um, uh, not inaugurations, a series where they have these great parties. Um, what would be the word for that? Where they have these great parties, they have these great um, ceremonies um, of, of, of a new birthing. And uh, it'll come to me in a minute, but in so many words, they have a... Hmm? Like commencement? It was, no, it's not a commencement. It's, it's like you... Um, the word will come to me. It's, it's a great celebration. Mm -hmm. It's a great celebration. It's a great birthday. It's a great party that is going on. And it'll come to me in a minute and stuff to talk about it in the Book of the Dead, where they just, uh, you just see endless amounts of tables of food. Tributes? Mm -hmm. Tributes or something like that? Mm -hmm. Tributes? Not tributes, not jubilees. It's another word that encapsulates all of that. Coronations. 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 Right. And so they have all these coronation parties. And I've seen these parties. I was able to travel in my dreams and see these particular parties on the other side. So what used to be a gloomy and dismal type of terrain is now a beautiful and bright Place. So it means that we are standing on the border from looking at this world that is being extinguished and there's another world on the horizon that is already for us. Right. So they say, I have the prepared a kingdom for you. Right. Well, that particular realm is that particular, that particular realm ha has, has been prepared. Every now and then we bump into these realms. There's a book called Dancing with Dragons. Uh, DJ Conway, and they said these mystical beings do exist, but every now and then we will see these, uh, uh, that mystical realm will bump into this realm. And that's when you get these mystical beings, they call them the chupacabras and stuff down in Mexico and different things like that, the Loch Ness Monster. Mothman, Mothman prophecies. Mothman prophecies, um, and these particular mystical beings people see, UFOs. It's nothing but seeing these particular energy, light energies from the other side mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And, 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 and this earth is full of mystical things that's been unreported by science because they're, they're not allowed by the governments of the world to report these strange and bizarre creatures. But there's a book that was put out in the early 1900s. Charles Fort is his name, I think of m mysterious beings and stuff. So dragons, fairies. Mm -hmm. You get the movie photographing fairies. There's another one called A Fairy Tale, A True Story. Mm -hmm. And also the fairy kingdom, when you see these movies like um, the Santa Claus, the elves, gnomes, and all of those things, are nothing but different aspects of the other world. Now I saw, I witnessed one of these coronations in, 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 in 19, uh, excuse me, in 2002, where I saw these two people come out of the back of a kitchen. It was like we was in some club. So in so many words, the dream realm will fit the terrain or uh, mm -hmm. the setting to coincide with based, based on what you are familiar with in this world to send a picture. So what would be a coronation or a celebration or a festival in the other world was a, me sitting in a club with a bunch of black folks, drinking, eating, having a good time. Mm -hmm. And out of the back of the kitchen, these little short dwarf twa people came out of the back of the kitchen and they had their face their skin was actually made out of 
what you would call mud cloth or kente cloth mm -hmm. and different things that they have in the fabrics of Africa. This was the actual skin. Mm -hmm. And I don't know whether it was at, whether they were sharing so much, sending me a message to say, now you are these otherworldly beings. But it's interesting here, part of, now this is very key, and this is in the mythology and this is in a lot of the esoteric work, you will have things like elves, gnomes, spirits, demons, ghouls, and goblins, and then you get this word, subterranean pygmies. So we already identified the pygmy is the derogatory term of what the white man called the Twa people. But for the mere fact they have, out of all the people on the earth, they have identified a black African tribe or, or, or the most ancient form of the group uh, of, of, of the oldest black people on the planet as a part of these demons and all this type of thing. And you get a sense of what they're talking about here. We are connected with the other side and the Twa people is a earlier people enough to even identify with the, with the other side. As, as a matter of fact, just look at the god Death. It's a monster-like figure. In so many words, I'm still giving you the images in what this world was able to view these spirits as, but in the other world, it's probably something so pristine and so beautiful until what is grotesque on this world is so pristine and beautiful because we're talking about energy, lights, and and it can take on any kind of form. Right. You see what I'm saying? It can talk. It can take on any kind of form. You see. Um, and these are these are these are things that we must ponder and uh, ponder. And it was interesting because. I understand now why white folks in the 1980s, especially from the mid-80s on up, the toys that the children would, the most popular toys, would be these hideous forms of monsters. And they had commentary, why would these children want to play with these hideous forms of monsters? And it was in toys and all, and then the computer age came, and now that's all in the Playstations and all of the other computer games of these hideous forms of monsters. They're trying to get them to understand concepts other than the worldly concepts of what we are used to. And too often they give us religion to tell us that that is all evil. And they give their children and preparing them to just, just think on an other world type basis. So, so you want to get your mind to the point where the strange becomes the normal. The bizarre becomes your playground. And then you can expand your mind to go beyond just the mundane realm. It's just, just, the, just the mundane realm. So these are some things we ponder. These are some things that, um, you know, uh, uh, we can very well uh, kick around a little bit. So give me some questions right quick.